Hi, I am Vacha Vorperian with the Joys of Circuits Analysis. And these are my lectures based on my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits, published by Cambridge University Press and available online from any bookseller. In this fourth video, I'm going to expose you to the pains of excruciating circuit analysis. And I promise I will alleviate that pain in my next video with more joyful circuit analysis. I'm going to use the example of the bridge circuit again, but this time with a dependent current source, GMV1, that talks to the voltage across the resistor R1. I'm going to determine the input resistance Rn using the method of nodal analysis and extract the parameter GM, which is going to be as much fun as extracting your tooth without a novocaine. The objective is to obtain the expression of the input resistance Rn in this form, where Gm stands out as a linear term in the numerator all by itself and as a linear term in the denominator all by itself. A, B, C, and D are constants that do not contain Gm. Now, I do not expect you to follow the next 16 steps of pure algebraic misery to perform the method of parameter extraction using the nodal equations of this circuit. This excruciating method is described in the following well-known reference. The only reason I'm including it in my lectures is to drive home harder the concepts of painless circuit analysis that I'm teaching you. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to extract GM in four simple steps using the extra element theorem for dependent sources. I'm going to leave all the components in symbolic form in contrast with the example worked out in this reference, where the authors assign numerical values to each of the resistors and only leave GM in symbolic form. Here are now the steps of parameter extraction using the method of nodal analysis. Step one, determine the indefinite admittance matrix by adding a new element RS at the input port. From the first step, you can already see that this is not going in the right direction. Instead of simplifying the circuit, you're making it more complicated. Nevertheless, let us proceed. Label the nodes and the sources V1 through V4, and here they are, node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, and the four sources V1, V2, V3, V4. Write the nodal equations and the indefinite admittance matrix follows. At each node n, determine the current in using superposition for v1 through v4 and obtain the indefinite admittance matrix. Now this isn't bad at all because all you had to do was write simple equations and use superposition. So far so good. We now extract gs according to the following cofactor theorem. The theorem says if a parameter alpha appears as plus alpha in positions i, k, and j, m, and as minus alpha in positions i, m, and j, k in the indefinite matrix, then the following relation is true. In the last term here, cofactor of y sub alpha, y sub alpha is another indefinite matrix that is obtained from y, i, and d by the following three operations. Add row j to row i, add column M to column K, delete row J and column M, and that's how you eliminate the parameter GS from the indefinite matrix and you obtain Y alpha. All cofactors of an IAM are equal. In our case, in the first time around, alpha is equal to GS. Because we introduced GS, we got to take it out before we get to GM. So we write that same relation now for GS and we determine the first term by setting GS equal to zero. That's easy. And we obtain this matrix. We determine next the second term, YGS. And here's that term after striking out the proper column and row. Notice it doesn't contain GS, but it still contains GM. Now we're going to extract GM from the first one 
in which gs was set equal to zero by a second application of the cofactor theorem. Same thing. So first we set equal to gm equals to zero, then by striking out the proper rows and columns in this matrix here, we'll obtain another indefinite matrix which does not contain gs, gm, and gm appears up front as a parameter. And that matrix, by setting equal to gs and gm equal to zero, we get the first one, here that is, does not have gs or gm in it, both have been set equal to zero. And here's the second one, which is obtained by striking out the proper row and column, indicated here. After doing the addition and the subtraction of the rows and the columns as described early on, and we obtain this matrix. Now this one does not contain GS or GM. We now extract GM from YGS by a second application of the cofactor theorem. In the first term, we set GM equal to zero, and in the last one, we eliminate GM by the operations indicated earlier. The first term is given by the following matrix. And the second term is given by the following matrix after we strike out the proper row and column after performing the proper row and column additions that we discussed earlier. And now we are going to determine the following cofactors. The first one is the cofactor of the indefinite matrix Y, I, and D with GS equals to zero and GM equals to zero. And since we know that all cofactors of an indefinite matrix are the same, we're going to pick up the simplest. And for this one, the simplest turns out to be this one because it contains the zero term here. For this indefinite matrix, the simplest cofactor is this one, it contains the zero term here. So that turns out to be the product of G2 with this one. For this indefinite matrix, the simplest cofactor turns out to be this one. The last cofactor to determine is this term here, which turns out to be just G2 plus G4. And finally, from the relationship between the indefinite admittance matrix and admittance matrix, we obtain the expression of the input resistance with GM as a parameter. It is given by the ratio of these cofactors. I think this answer needs some good discussion. The method of parameter extraction that I just showed you is about as painful as tooth extraction, without nitrous oxide that is. You arrive at the answer after you expand four determinants, assuming you have survived the algebra. And this is exactly how you get meaningless solutions to network problems. This is exactly how you get turned off from electronic circuits. And this is exactly how you put yourself at the mercy of circuit simulation programs trying to make sense out of a circuit. In my next video, I'm going to show you how you determine the input resistance of this bridge circuit with a dependent source using the extra element theorem for dependent sources in four easy steps with the least amount of algebra that you can think of. See you then.